Hey, Frank, I'm Master. So today we're going to be talking about the house of the cell. I've pronounced it wrong in the past um, as the ser with an R, but it's actually an L, just like cell phone. I did find the uh, pronunciation on their Instagram page and I did validate that with the perfumer. I'm going to put the information up here. Now, today we're going to be talking about Chiara, but before I go into that, I want to give you a background story on the house so that you know what to expect when you are exploring the house. Now, this is a Japanese house, so it goes without saying that they're influenced by the Kodo culture, so the way of incense, along with the cultural preferences in Japan. I'm not sure that it is still true for the newest generation, but then um, it is my understanding that they like um, personal scents. They don't like uh, strong scents that are going to impede in other people's personal spaces, so they tend to be light and personal. That's why, for example, Joe Malone is doing really well in Asian countries. So same thing with um, Arabic countries, right? They like uh, woodier, stronger, well-performing fragrances. It's just a matter of personal preferences. So here it goes without saying that the Japanese culture, along with the Kodo, uh, culture or way of incense is influencing uh, the fragrances of how they're making them. Um, so expect uh, scents that are clean, uh, refined, and a little bit of, for the most part, personal scents depending on how much you spray. And that's what I love about this house because it makes them really versatile. And then uh, one thing worth mentioning is that they use natural ingredients. So again, on top of that, they have textured fragrances. Now, um, another aspect that sold me on the house is the fact that they have fragrances ranging from like really expensive, like a thousand dollars to a hundred dollars. Uh, Chiara here retails for 1150 US dollars. I know it's really expensive, but they also have fragrances that are in the $100 price range and then they're really well done with in, uh, natural ingredients. The ones that I have here, uh, Tsuki, I know I'm butchering the names here, uh, Kazahikuru, and then um, Akinesasu. So these are great fragrances as well, priced at $100, which kind of tells me that they're not pricing their fragrances for greed. They're not coming up with fancy packaging. They're clean, 33 mLs, uh, clean. That are not meant to, how to say that, to give off a perceived higher value like some of the niche houses are doing. These are great fragrances. So makes me think that at least for pricing, they're not a greedy company. Um, Chiara today. Before I go into the scent, bear with me here. Um, there's a Chiara Kinam craze because of the scarcity uh, driving the prices. But one thing that I would like to share my perspective on this, just because something is scarce, therefore expensive, doesn't mean that is the best for you. The key word here is you, right? So in my um, instance here, I love, I tend to love ouds that are uh, cleaner, have like finer woody smells, uh, slightly floral, citrusy, sweet, um, incense-y, uh, leathery, and then uh, animalic to some extent, but not um, as animalic as indie woods, for example. So this, without, without um, exaggerating here, really worked for me and connected with me. I've sampled this couple of times, so I tried to convince myself that it wasn't worth it given the price, but after sampling a couple of times, I just knew I had to have it. Now, that just tells me that just because I love this, I put value on this. Now, for somebody who's loving indie oud that are animalic, leathery, barnyard, this might not hold value for you. So what I'm trying to say to cut it short is, Follow your own preferences and then define what is worth it to you. That's all I'm trying to say. So this one, obviously, I love the scent profile. That's what I think. That's why I think it is worth it for me. So thank you for bearing with me this far. Now on to the scent. This is an amazing fragrance. Now keep in mind uh, what I've mentioned uh, before. So what I get out of the, uh, the fragrance at the top is a citrusy, incense lemony, camphorous with a light patchouli in the background. The picture that comes into mind is imagine a quiet, peaceful, mysterious, foggy pine forest with a slightly earthy touch to it, but not like a, a dirty, earthy feel to it. The light patchouli here 
adds that clean earthy vibe now think of the patchouli as the dry down for example of indian patchouli so skip the opening uh funky danky earthy wet moist feel that you get out of the opening or top notes of patchouli by itself and then go straight to the dry down where it's a little bit uh, earthy but clean and a little bit woody that's what they have here so it gives off the realistic feel of having uh like walking in a pine forest that has a little bit of fog the incense meditative feel there along with the camphorous feel and then the slightly clean earthy vibe that's what i get out of the fragrance for the first hour and it has that beautiful meditative feel to it it's highly nuanced in the mid though i get the beautiful addition of sandwood and rose now it is worth mentioning that when i was testing this out of those lucky sand dabbers uh, the fragrance was coming off mostly camphorous and I didn't get much of the sandwood and rose But here I was glad and then uh, pleasantly surprised that actually um, Those nuances came alive here it really rounds off and balances the fragrance um, It adds a little bit of weight when you get to the meat The opening is a little bit ethereal giving you that mysterious meditative feel and the sandwood and rose actually anchors that down a little bit there um, and then as it progresses though to dry down the sandalwood and rose is going to tone down you're still going to get that camphorous foresty feel and then you're also going to get a uh, increasingly more noticeable grainy woody texture that's coming from cedar wood and the patchouli is still there along with the balsamic um, incense if you're giving that meditative feel um, to the fragrance throughout the wearing of the fragrance that's pretty much what I get out of the fragrance and the nuances that I pick up here is just amazing. For somebody who is not into ooze or doesn't really know um, how nuanced a complex ooze are, you might just smell this and then think, oh yeah, it's slightly uh, piney, uh, I get citruses and I get sandalwood and rose, that's it. But when you listen closely to what is in here, uh, it is really pleasurable and an enjoyable. That's what I love about this fragrance. Every single time I've worn it, there are some facets of the fragrance that get enhanced or more noticeable than the previous wear. And that's what I love about this. It just constantly shifts here and there with each wear. And then that's the same thing I've noticed with the $100 fragrances. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing um, them later, but most of them, I had to try them at least three times from the bottle. Uh, besides the samples to actually grasp what it was doing because it was shifting from time to time when it was colder I had more other nuances when it was warmer other nuances or facets were more noticeable than other and I kept telling myself well I have to scratch off all my review that I did previously and the start of course is kind of quite different than what I experienced like two days ago so I would say if you're sampling this house, give it time there to notice the nuances. If you love it the first time, try it again the second time to make sure that even with the little variations, at least on my skin that I've noticed, that you still love it. Now back to uh, Kiara here. I know it is expensive, $11.50, but like I said, don't go off of hype, go off of your preference here. If this is not a type of oud profile that you like, it's not gonna be worth it to you. If it's what you like, uh, test it and then see if it's something that is worth spending money on. The performance is actually quite good. Longevity is good, but then uh, projection, depending on the number of sprays that you put on, I usually go with two to three sprays and I'm set for the day. Uh, longevity 10 plus hours. Projection though, for the first hour is there and after that it becomes a personal uh, scent. I have a friend that actually the first time he received that did five sprays end up having a headache and then it was projecting a lot more um, than what I got which is the first hour or two so overall I would say above uh, average type of longevity and then projection is uh, average there but overall great uh, fragrance the uh, setup for the performance here make it really versatile I forgot to mention that, but it's really versatile. That's what I love about this fragrance. I can wear it anywhere. Now, share with me what you love um, in terms of oud, what type of oud profiles you like. Uh, if you like the refined, more refined, finer, sweeter, non-challenging uh, type of oud, or do you like raw, animalic, uh, leathery ouds? Again, thank you for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe, and then take care. Bye.